I am your educator Shulagna Ghato. Today I want to brief you about the topic molecular phylogeny. So first of all, what is phylogenetics? Phylogenetics is the science of estimating, simultaneously analyzing the evolutionary relationship among various groups of organisms. And molecular phylogenetics is the use of the structure of molecules to gain information on an organism's evolutionary relatedness. So here, what kind of biomolecules should be considered to estimate the relatedness? It should always be either amino acid with change into proteins or information molecules or nucleotides with change into nucleic acid basically DNA or RNA. Here the nucleotide sequence of a pair of homologous or same gene have a higher information content than the amino acid sequence of the corresponding proteins because changes which are occurred due to mainly mutation alter the DNA sequence but do not uh, affect the amino acid sequence. So mainly non-coding regions of DNA that means which will not produce the polypeptide chain are often used to evaluate the evolutionary relatedness. So closely related organisms will exhibit fewer sequence differences than distantly related organisms. That means in this picture species 1 and species 2 contain the same ancestor but species 3 grows from the oldest or first ancestor directly isn't it so now the phylogenetic tree phylogenetics studies construct a two dimensional graph of tree like pattern that describes the evolutionary relation between organisms or genes from various organisms which is called phylogenetic tree so this picture shows the phylogenetic tree this is the branch point and those are the new species which are formed from the ancestral organism by mutation now the molecular clock molecular clock hypothesis was first coined by researchers e zuckerkandl and l pauling on their experimental observations it is a technique in molecular evolution to relate the time that the two species diverged to a new number of molecular differences that means in dna or rna sequences or in proteins it means suppose the number of amino acid modifications in the line of descent can be used as a measure of the time of divergence of two different species from a common ancestor. So molecular clock which is also called gene clock or evolutionary clock at molecular level determines the rate at which many mutations become constant that means the greater mutational differences can create a greater evolutionary distance between organisms from its ancestral lineage like that the rate of accumulation of mutational changes in genome and proteins will always remain constant over a period of time clear now the neutral theory molecular clock hypothesis received theoretical backing when the biologist moto kimura developed the neutral theory of molecular evolution in the year 1968 so neutral theory claims that the overwhelming majority of evolutionary changes that means mutations at the molecular level are caused by random fixation of selectively neutral or very nearly neutral mutants through the cumulative effects of sampling drift under continued input of new mutants. Mainly mutation occurs in a very slow rate so it 
takes millions of years to occur a considerable change in organisms from its ancestral lineage. But he said mutation occurs in a small rate that means they have a neutral value and it takes millions of years to accumulate such small mutations and only then a huge change can possible or a new species can be formed by random drift. And natural, uh, sorry, neutral theory also recognizes that most morphological, physiological or behavioral changes which are occurred into the organisms are held on molecular level. That means the change happened into the gene pool. So which can best survive and able to pass to the next generation? That gene pool can create change and after millions of years it can create a new species but the genes which cannot survive which are eliminated from the nature so many mutations must be deleterious also clear so there are mainly three observations of neutral theory first of all there is a far greater rate of mutation in regions of non-coding DNA. That means the DNA which cannot produce polypeptide chains. As compared to the rate of mutations in regions of DNA for functional area of proteins. Secondly, the rate of neutral mutation remain always constant. For example, I can say the number of substitution in alpha chain of hemoglobin is always remain constant or same in mouse, horse and even in humans. And thirdly, the most important observation is many important proteins are polymorphic but carry out same function. That means suppose there are four different proteins and they can act the same function though they have difference in polypeptide chains so they are structurally polymorphic but their polymorphism are not impacted upon their actions so in in this case mutation which are occurred in various ways are not so much effective upon organisms particular functions and for that's why millions of years are needed to form a new species because most of small mutations have neutral or small impact on organisms, right? So here polymorphism can occur due to gene duplication, gene loss, gene fusion, etc. So this is also one of more important fact about neutral theory. Clear? Now the calibration of molecular clock. To calibrate the molecular clock, the absolute age of some evolutionary divergent events should be knowledgeable, like split between two different species. Estimation of the timing of this above event can be gained by estimating the fossil record or by knowing some oldest geological events like mountain formation, river formation, etc. Now, now, calibrating formula is small r equal to capital D by 2 into small t, where r is the rate of nucleotide substitutions per lineage per million years, and d is the proportion of base pairs in DNA that differ between two sequences, and t is the time of most recent common ancestor. So, Hope your concept about this topic have been cleared after this session. There has provided a link of e-quiz into the description box so you can score and test yourself by those questions. And if you have any doubt or facing any problem during solving the e-quiz, then after scoring, Please ask me into the comment section and also you can reach to us through our mail id which is into the description box. 
I am so much happy to say that in previous lesson I have got your lots of responses and doubts through mail. So don't miss the chance to get a healthy score. Lastly, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Then you can get notification about my next videos which is coming on every Sunday. Stay safe, stay tuned. Bye.